Good morning. Uh, I didn't get to meet all of you, but uh, again, uh, Ken Lawan. I've uh, been in San Diego a little over four months at Sharp Healthcare, and uh, for a lot of people within Sharp or within healthcare within San Diego, the easiest way to describe me is I'm the new Bill Spooner, and I don't get I don't get insulted by that because I used to hear it multiple times a day. I still hear it at least weekly at, at Sharp, and uh, for many of you probably know Bill, and I know I've known Bill for 20 years, and it's a real privilege to to be able to be the next CIO at Sharp and follow in, in Bill's footsteps. So uh, what I'm going to talk about this morning is is the uh, you know, the changes going on related to the Accountable Care Act, and uh, I, I would generally describe it as health care reform, and uh, Gary's right about the, the economics, and, and a lot of people used to ask us, you know, what if the act is repealed, what, what's going to happen, and, and when I was back in Nebraska, and it's the same here, it really didn't matter. I mean, the government was a driver, a big driver of changing this industry, but it kind of the same as the horse was out of the barn already. You know, the economics of healthcare was already broken. Industry and uh, businesses and payers and the healthcare organizations recognized that things had to change. And so we were all moving towards, uh, towards this change. And the Healthcare Act has really, it's really helped uh, spur it in a lot of ways. And, and one of the ways is really in the health exchanges and some of the work that that's driven. And so what we're seeing and what I'd say the biggest business challenge the biggest thing that IT is responding to is this whole shift of our of our organizations from a point of care fee for service provider of healthcare to one that's really trying to manage populations of health. And a lot of people will call that the volume to value shift, or you know we're going after the triple A to, to really compete on 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 cost, efficiencies, you know, our experience and quality. And Probably the most common term you hear now is everybody's talking about population health. Uh, and, you know, why is that such an important thing to IT? I mean, the biggest problem that, that we face now as IT professionals and in, in, in supporting our organizations is the, the fundamental automation process that we've grown up with is really shifting. And the things that have been important historically, and most of the people that have made their money selling products into IT, those solutions are now becoming either just the basic foundation or in some cases they're not even adequate uh, to do what they used to do. So we're really moving dramatically from automating those points of care to being more concerned about what happens between the points of care. And while this introduces a lot of different challenges, I'm just going to highlight three of them uh, for a few minutes. The first is, is what I call the connect, collaborate, and coordinate change. The second is the whole area of data analytics. And the third is the engagement of patients and consumers. And those are three significant areas that we're really focused on. And the whole industry is focused on trying to bring solutions to bear. So first, when you think about the, the aspect of connect, collaborate, and coordinate, it's that model of shifting from being more concerned or as concerned about automating and supporting transitions of care and the connections of care than the points of care. And it, as I said, healthcare industry has grown up with a lot of automation, a lot of, it's, it's predominantly a vendor supply uh, market. So there's very little self-development in healthcare. So the vendors are always responding to where the needs are. And historically we started with things like lab systems and radiology systems, and then grew to starting to automate the electronic medical record, physician order entry. And so, but it was still around, what are we automating in the hospital? What are we automating in the physician's office? What are we automating in home care? And so most of our solutions have grown up that way. So it's not uncommon and, uh, in organizations to have products that support different components of your organization and to be focused on them being as efficient as possible within those operations. And when you think about moving from being, being incented to providing as many services as you can in as many locations as you can to managing a population of people for a fixed set of dollars, it becomes increasingly important that you understand and treat the patient more holistically and you know what's going on between one care setting and another care setting and even more importantly you know what's going on when they're not in not when you don't have them in your in your system and in your care setting so that requires us to look at automation that connects all those look all those places and it spurred a couple of phenomenons in healthcare it spurred the uh, 
the, the growth and the expansion of, of vendors like Epic, Cerner, that are really enterprise vendors. So they bring to the, to the organizations one system, one record, so to speak, across multiple locations, outpatient, inpatient, physician offices, home care. And, read it, and that's so that within our own domains, we can try to connect a single, all of our places under one umbrella so that's easier for us to coordinate. Uh, it's also spurred the, the growth that was driven by uh, government funding and that in health information exchanges so that organizations that are working together or providing care or even someone uh, who has responsibility for population needs to know what's going on in other, in other parts of the industry or parts of the market. So we need to know if someone's been in an emergency room because we've got responsibility for managing that, that patient's chronic disease. So we either have to partner directly with those other organizations and try to get information from them or you know, the goal with the health information exchanges is to be, to be able to, to uh, spur at the connection and the interaction across. The other thing that is really challenging there is that there really haven't been solutions for individuals that emerged called care coordination or care managers or disease managers that follow those patients from uh, setting to setting or interact with them in their home. There's really not been a solution for them to, to actually document what they do. And there was a great debate about, do you put that in the, in the physician or your outpatient, so your primary care's record? Well, it's really not necessarily a part of that. You put it in the hospital record, we'll know. So there's a whole growth of solutions the big vendors trying to develop something. Uh, a lot of companies that are getting involved in this space, Qualcomm, West Health, and others to how do we manage that care coordination and that flow between patients. So we're, we've gone from an area where we've been very good at automating silos to now we have to automate the continuum. The second area I talk about is data analytics. And data analytics has been very slow in healthcare. It's been very slow to, to come to the industry and that that has emerged in healthcare has really about been more about retrospective analysis of how we performed. And so when we were gonna go into a contract negotiation with Anthem you know, or Blue Shield, we wanted to understand how we'd done in the past and what we wanted to do as far as negotiating rates. At Sharp, we're probably a little more advanced because we've gotten into a lot of what we call managed care contracts where we're under an HMO or a, or a fixed payment. And we've had a lot of quality reporting that we needed to do. So we used our, our um, data warehouse to bring in data from these disparate systems and to be able to report on how we're performing and how we're doing quality wise. But the real shift now is around moving from kind of retrospective analysis to more predictive analysis. So we need to understand the populations we're responsible for. We need to know up front what kind of care they're going to need. We need to be able to identify who are those top, you know, 5% that are going to drive 70% of the cost. And we need to start managing them proactively. In addition, we need to know when there's variances from care, when either our pro providers are not following protocols, or when our patients are not following protocols. And so the whole game in, in analytics has changed. And then the last part of that is really be bringing in you know, big data or in the internet of things and really connecting that into how we're looking at our analysis. And so we're seeing a huge growth in the data analytics space and if you were to look at uh, industry reports like Gartner or Class that are in healthcare, there's really no leader there. There's really three or four different approaches to it, and there's a lot of people buying for that space. And the other thing we're having is a tremendous difficulty recruiting people into that space. And this, I think it's a real opportunity for healthcare to, to bring in, and we're talking about should we kind of bring in students you know, out of college and grow them in that space, because it's really, it's really more difficult for us to find qualified people. The third area is the area of uh, patient, and I say patient and consumer engagement. So if we're really going to bend the curve on cost with healthcare, and it's not necessarily about, you know, driving the cost down, but it's bending the increases, we can't do that and we can't engage with populations unless the patient is a part of it. And so there's two things going on in, in this space, and one is this whole area of engaging people in the management of their di disease. And the second one is engaging people, healthy people, or pre-chronic, uh, uh, in their daily lives. So what we're trying to do now is, is introduce technologies and that help us monitor chronic patients in their homes, 
and you're seeing a lot of development. Qualcomm again is in the forefront of that, looking at technology that helps connect devices in the home. And looking at how do we monitor whether people are gaining weight, you know, managing their diet. And then, you know, I talked about those care coordinators, they're interacting with these patients. So when we look at chronic patients, we need to know that they're on track. We need to be able to, to track that they're receiving medications, that they're getting to their visits. We need to be able to check in with them on a more frequent basis instead of waiting for them to show up in the ED or back in our hospital. And so that, that creates a need of really driven by the telehealth area. And then for those patients that are more in the category of, we call it, you know, pre-chronic, or, you know, their tests and their indicators are showing that, you know, if they don't do something to manage their lifestyle, um, and, you know, some of us are probably in that category where you're, you know, you're just close to being pre-diabetic or your heart, or your heart pressure, your blood pressure is just kind of on the edge. So we need to get them involved in programs that are managing that, trying to bring it down, trying to maintain it. And so that's how do we engage, not in the health care or health provision section, but more in health. How do we get and make sure they're, they're either uh, on the right kind of diet, they're getting involved in exercise programs, and there's such a, a strong social component of that. One of, the, one of the things that really drives people's success in there is having some kind of a social network that they work with. So how do we become part of that, uh, that uh, communication or, or conversation? And that's one of the things I keep driving at with our healthcare providers, especially the primary care physicians who are still a cornerstone to the future of managing people, is that people are having conversations, they're looking at their health much more on the outside than they are coming to you. And if we don't find a way to get engaged in that conversation and make that them be, continue to believe in us as a trusted source, we're gonna become obsolete in a lot of areas. Not for the very sick, but for those people who are in the middle and especially for those people who are healthy. And that's the last component of the connection is how do we interact with those, that, those folks, those young adults that really don't have any health care needs. But in some cases, you talk to organizations, if they don't come in and get, have their um, you know, annual visit done, then you don't even get credit for them. You don't even get payment for them. So we've got to be engaging them, making sure they're keeping care of themselves, making sure that, that they have health care needs. And, and as I said, be part of the conversations that they're having on Facebook or in social networks about what, what's going on. So those are three significant areas that, that we're really focused on. And as I said, you know, a lot of these traditional vendors, the Cerners, the Epics, the Allscripts, and the folks in the world are trying to be players in that. But there's so much innovation going on. And the biggest challenge for us as CIOs, I tell people every day, what's your biggest challenge? I said, it's how do we take all this great technology that's being developed and find things that we can apply and work to support our environment but integrate into what we've already done. And we've spent tens of millions of dollars with these other big players. And if we introduce other things that just segments what we're doing versus helps, I said, connect, collaborate, and coordinate. If you just put in point solutions and you're just now having this care coordinator using five systems to try to manage these people instead of being connected, the challenge. So I think there are, some, there are some big enablers as we look at this. One obviously is telehealth and what we can do in telehealth. The other one is mobility and mobility for our workers and mobility in how we connect and interact with, with the patients. But there are also a couple of significant challenges. One is security. And uh, you know, the, the whole aspect of having to manage the privacy and security of the data and the information we're doing as we start to interact in different settings, as we start to get involved in, in social media and that, that's critical. Even though I think my predecessor would say 25 year olds don't care about privacy. You know, look at the stuff they put out there. The government cares about privacy and we're regulated on privacy. So even if, if, even if our consumers and our future patients don't care, we have to care about it. So security is a big issue. And then this whole uh, aspect of how do you manage and how do you connect and work on this you know, big data and internet of things because we're talking about connecting and gathering information on a lot of devices and things in the home. And we're not very experienced with that in healthcare. And so there's a lot of opportunities for us to learn from what others are doing. So I think I'm gonna stop there and, and uh, move on.